Hey guys, welcome to a new video on the 4x4 dual engine sprinter buggy. And in this episode, we are going to install this monstrous dual engine setup. So stay tuned. So guys, the engine is ready to get into the buggy. Uh, I removed the coils for a minute because they were hanging onto these two, these two bolts and were in the way to mount this bolt. I made these two bars. We'll get some ratchet straps around here and get a like wooden beam on top and just like that we can lift the engine because it was quite a challenge to think about a solution to get these two engines with the gearbox all assembled into the frame but i think this will work but first we'll get the carburetors and the airbox off uh, because it's quite high and if this is the top level it would be nice and <laughs> every weight we can shed off this assembly for lifting it makes it easier so let's do that first and then i'll come back to you so both carburetors with the air filters are off as you can see looks way tinier now and the old assembly is a bit lower so i hope it fits now we can remove all the bodywork and maybe this side protection bar might be easier as well and then you might be ready to go lift the engine into the buggy okay let's go So all the bodywork is off, except this one panel. Uh, yeah, we don't probably don't need it. Actually, just let me take it off. So that piece of bodywork is off as well. As you can see, garbage full of body panels. What else do you want? Uh, driving buggy, probably. So it's now time to take this protection bar off. Next day. Okay, guys. Yesterday, yesterday, we were installing these engines into the buggy. We're lifting it into the buggy, but we, it was quite a struggle. I mean, we were struggling like the whole afternoon, and it took us like four or five hours to get these engines installed. So that's why I didn't got any coverage of that, because it was like clueless to film five hours of just. Engine in, engine out, engine in, engine out. It was like crazy. So I didn't do that, but they're in. The thing is, I only changed this aluminium part because you've seen this part was on there when it was out of the frame. And now we ditch this part. We get this one in because as you can see, this one is way longer and get the clearance with the frames everywhere. And the other thing is I cut out this frame, the lower frame, it's right here. Uh, yeah, I cut it out and I think it still quite fits. So now I know the engine fits with the airbox and everything on there. It's time to put them, get them back out and yeah, either get that back in or make a custom like lower frame because now it's just like these two tubes and these two cross, like the cross bracing on there. I don't think it's strong enough. So that's our next goal. And then we can get to fabricate the engine mounts like we use these bushings, we'll get tubes from here to here and from here to here maybe or somewhere else. So that's that's the next step. First get the engine out and make the lower subframe complete again. Okay, so engine is out. The other one is still in but it is disconnected from the gearbox. So I tested if this cross fit and of course it doesn't. Why should things go well in once? So that means we have to make like a new frame thing-ish. Uh, and now the engine is out, we can cut these pieces off and get these one to the right length so they match each other. And I was thinking like a bar going there. So well from here to the other side and on these two tubes, that's why you have to make them the same length. And then make two, bar, two bars parallel to each other from like this one to that bar and then on those two parallel bars we can make the mounts for the engine the lower mounts that go right on here and there and the mounts for the gearbox which have holes in here and on their side over there as well 
And since I use the CAD program, uh, well, I'm a true engineer. So all jokes aside, let's cut that pieces out and make these to the right length. Okay, I cut those off. I cut those to the right length. So now we can get this bar in the right position, like so. Cut it to the right length over there, and then I think weld it into the frame. So I have this bar cut to the right length and it now fits into the frame quite nicely. Of course it has to be up like this, but yeah, that's something I will do when I will weld it in. And so I cut the other two bars to length and this is quite how it will be sitting. So I welded this frame in and only welded the top sides of it. I have to do the sides and the bottom of the steel bars. But for now it is in there quite good and now we can focus on getting the, that engine not like this because this is not the right position and the mounting points for the gearboxes. But first I will weld the sides correctly so it doesn't flex when the engines are on top of it. And then we can make the mountings for the engines and the gearboxes. So the next thing I made these like bracket thingies, it's just 30 by 30 millimeters like the bar, the same bar we used over there, and drill a hole in it. It will go on the gearbox just like this, and then have a nut on the other side of the bolt, just like that. And we can weld it onto the frame right here and uh, yeah, on the other side as well. So this is what will eventually bolt on to the engine and yeah I made a thread in this hole so because it's limited space I made a thread in that hole so you can easily just like screw it out without needing like a wrench on the other side. So the lower engine mounts are in place and that engine will go nowhere. And that's because the whole buggy isn't able to go nowhere. Quack. Fucking hell. Why do these things need to be so fucking heavy? Adjusting. Almost. Okay. I believe it's in. Okay, guys. So I think both engines are installed with the gearbox on its proper position. It took me all night. And so we can now make the engine mounts from here to the frame, other side as well. And then these engines will absolutely stay in its place. So I'll notch some of this tube and weld it in. But can we take a minute on how good this setup looks? It looks absolutely insane. This bar is in, this bar is in, and on the other side, if you can see it as well. I also welded in this bushing. So once we complete the exhaust system, it will go like this, over through there and onto the damper. There's actually a point where I can mount it to. 
because only mounting it on the engine is isn't enough i guess so we'll go 180 degrees turn and we'll make a plate we we'll just mount onto there just a shred in it as you can see just normal m10 thread and yeah that's nice so i only have to make that and the tube for mounting the engine but for now already i'm really putting some force on it and it doesn't move a single millimeter that's a positive thing and yeah like i said only that one and then this is finished so i'll go ahead and do that and then i'll come back to you we'll come back to you so let's start with the first cable um it doesn't really matter which cable is going where uh, they're all the same length so and totally i have four well let's start with this one i clamped it in right here and as you can see we have to solder like this gap so we have our iron warming up right now and then we can solder this gap and make sure this is quite firmly installed so the first one is done only thing is it looks absolutely terrible but this stuck and quite firm so yeah i think this one will be for the clutch because that one will be like less used luckily we have the other three to practice a bit more yeah <laughs> let's do that quickly but still good doing it good is especially <laughs> very important so i've done all four well soldered i was always almost saying welding but i mean soldered to the yeah right place it doesn't look that great but it's quite firmly attached uh you can easily test it by just pulling one string like suddenly really really hard and if it doesn't break well it won't break in your product car and to be fair the last one there was this one it was this one it uh, was really the best uh, because i figured out like if you get like this coppery piece really really hot and then you get the solder in uh, it will just melt into it and you just create like a bath of uh, yeah, solder solder stuff so that was that uh, really helped for me but i'm happy i've done these four and well now they can go onto the car but that's something for tomorrow tomorrow so i took the carburetors off for a minute because that will make installing the throttle cable way easier and the thing is we have to make this part go right in there there are like two slots one for i think normally these carburetors use two throttle cables you see on here as well but since i only use, use one and i only use one on the cbr 1000 project uh, I think we'll use one on this bobby as well. Um, yeah, the thing is, you have to navigate simply through the whole assembly of carburetors. And then take it on on the other side. Make sure it is in the in the rail properly, otherwise it won't work. And let's check for a minute. Yes, correct. Way, and you can just try and slide it in. Was, was very easy there you go just like that and then we take this piece get the cable a bit more through the sleeve just like this and then we can screw that nut like over there and yeah tighten it down and we'll be fine and it will be fully complete and fixed That's it. And the thing is, I turn it a bit more. It's not break anything. You can see it. If I now pull this cable on the other side, it opens the butterfly valves exactly the way we wanted them. So now we can attach this cable to the frame. I already did it on that side, like just the back line. 
follows the red tubing and just attach it with some zip ties. Really easy, but it's quite effective. And we're going to do it on this side as well. So this is how the cables go from the pedal box. You can see both are connected to the pedal box. This cable actually is a bit too long, but I don't think it matters that much because my force will always go continue in the way the sleeve goes in this case. So I don't think it's that much of a problem. And yeah, from the pedals going straight to both of the engines, so that is nice. Now we can continue with the clutch cables. So this is how it's supposed to sit. We have the end of our cable onto the clutch lever and yeah, I tightened it to the bracket with a washer in between because when I was trying to tighten it, this part will pull straight through this bracket and ended up <laughs> being not tightened. But this works fine for now. It's fully tightened so it will go nowhere and you can now engage or disengage the clutch. And whilst I was doing that, it started snowing. Yeah. It's officially way too cold for a project car. But we'll keep on going because I want to drive this thing in the snow. And for that we have to finish it. So if that's not worth your thumbs up, uh, I don't know what is. We'll keep going with the project. So. so now we only have to attach these cables to the frame rails. And I was thinking about attaching them to the lower frame rails. But I think it will make more sense if we attach the cables to the upper frame rails just as we attach the throttle cable to because it will give a cleaner look and that connection isn't that, that much at an angle so I just think we'll take this tube okay guys I am now editing this video and I see now the video is already 17 minutes long and if you're still watching nice to thank you I have a special offer I will finish the electrical wiring, the fuel system and the second radiator. I think that's the only three things we have yet to do. And the only thing you have to do is just subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video. And for now, bye.